in the last stream we continued our way working through the ultimate tech quest line we started on the mechanism chapter and we did almost every quest here the only quest we did not do is the quest for the crusher and i think the crusher is probably fairly easy for us to make and so right at the start of today's episode before we do anything else if we quickly grab two iron buckets which we can now do because between streams we've managed to get up to 50,000 iron which is a staggering amount of iron we are fully backed up on steel now uh, thanks to our new steel production which is much faster than the blast furnace and so now there's nothing really using steel and we are making like quadruple the amount of iron that we are kind of any other ingot uh, we have the one miner down there and we have the other miner of course down here both of those have signalum caps and both of those are going to the pulverizer then the induction smelter so we're getting a lot more iron than anything else that has resulted now in a staggering amount of iron which is fantastic for us we do want to get some lava here now the slight problem here is that um i don't think we can extract the lava from the bottling plant and we also can't extract it directly from the fluid pump and because we're not using a tank there that also makes it difficult for us to get any lava thankfully we can just craft these ceramic lava buckets like this and then we can just very quickly go and do something like this and like this we also don't need this torch anymore actually because we did put down the feral flare lanterns in the last episode so i'll quickly get rid of all of those and then back in here we should now have everything that we need in order to make the mechanism crusher which is not a machine i think we need for reference, it's basically just a pulverizer, but for mechanism. So you can use it to break stuff down. I think you can do the whole cobble to gravel, gravel to sand processing chain with the crusher as well. We might need one at some point in the future, but for now, it gets us an extra tech book and it completes out the mechanism quest line, paving the way for us to work today on the power quest line and probably also on the ultimate technium quest line as well. I think that before the end of today's episode, we should be able to kind of just complete the ultimate tech section also real quick i should go ahead and collapse basically all of these quest lines here because we don't really need to go back to basic tech advanced tech or elite tech and it's gonna make our lives just a little easier in the future not having to scroll down through all the quests to get to the quest line that we're trying to complete so right at the end of the last episode we did unlock the research paper for uranium and so now if we go back up to oz r us we can disable osmium which is what we were getting previously and now if we once again grab some colored stone we should be able to use this to get some uranium fragments which we can then use in order to make uranium ore which of course you know the idea by now we can then use to uh, to get a uranium miner up and running between streams i have done a little bit of work actually on the base you'll see that i have finally doubled up our platform over here which is going to be necessary i'm hopeful again that before the end of today's episode we'll have the ultimate technium automated and we're going to do that over here i don't think it's going to take up that much space and at this point in time we can almost certainly get rid of at least one if not two of these coke ovens because now the only thing using cold coke is the recipe here for basic technium we no longer need it for the production of steel and so over here the new platform is going to be for the final two tiers of technium we're going to do hellish and voided and both of those i think are going to be makeable over on this platform here i also of course duplicated our more cylindrical looking platform on this side as well and currently we still don't have working compacting drawers i've made a bunch of framed drawers here we've got a ton of these uh, standard one by one drawers and we've also got a bunch of compacting drawers i do plan on moving all of the stuff from down here it's a bit janky at the minute the old platform is still kind of here and we've got like this weird situation with the tree absorber kind of built around the current platform but i will get rid of this platform just as soon as we can move everything from these drawers up into our new drawers again the current problem that we're running into is that uh, in this version of the mod pack if you try and put like an ingot into the compacting drawer it, uh, it just doesn't work it doesn't show you the ingot in nugget and block form and no matter how you do this it just doesn't work if you try putting the nuggets in first it also doesn't work if you try putting the blocks in first it also doesn't work and so uh, that's the plan for this island we're going to fill basically everything here up uh, redstone does work which is nice and i think uh, things like diamond and emerald would also probably work and maybe lapis and coal but uh, for whatever reason the ingots currently don't work um anyway uh that's what i've been doing between streams and that's kind of why we're now at fifty thousand iron because the base has been running for a few more hours we now have uh, five and a half hours locked in our time in a bottle 
anywhere back over here we can do this and this and that gets us a stack and two stacks and a bit of uranium ore nice so the uranium ore is interesting here because we can smelt it into uranium ingots and we can also do the same thing with the induction smelter where we produce the ingot along with some byproducts but i think the main idea for our uranium is probably not going to be to do that because looking a little bit further on down the line the plan for today is going to be to try and get the reactor from power up and running and this is going to be our gateway into kind of mid to late game power generation in this mod pack and the way that this works is we take uraninite and use that as a fuel in the reactor and uraninite is made using uranium ore we can't quite see it yet because we've not unlocked the power uh, mod but we can unlock the power mod just as soon as we get some uranium ingots and so i guess what we can probably do at least temporarily is throw like a stack of uranium into this induction smelter that's going to get us some uranium ingots it's also going to complete this quest i assume we need four blocks of uranium yeah in order to uh, complete this here that should be fine of course as soon as all this is uh, smelted we're going to be good to go and of course we can give it a slight tap to make it just a little bit faster here that's going to make getting all of the uranium we need substantially easier and uh, we might as well keep topping that up we only need 36 uranium or of course the 36 uranium ore we are going to have to put down on this lower level and i do believe it's going to require a higher tier of support frame it does it requires the tier 8 support frame much like the uh, emerald ore that we have over in the corner there once again that is not a problem we have uh, 38,000 emeralds at this point and so getting a bunch more of this tier 8 support frame not gonna be too difficult and so with that we should be able to quite easily set up yet another or miner all right and there we go we now have yet another miner this one for the uranium and we also have uranium all there ready to go i did also cover up all of the conveyor belts here between episodes and so now no matter where we fly we don't end up picking up uh, any of the ores we can technically still pick up some ores because i didn't cover up the belts that go to the drawers themselves so there is a little bit of uh, exposed beltage but the vast majority of the belts here are fully covered up which is nice one thing that i did think was going to look nicer was putting down like a piece of steel scaffolding here like that that looks like it just kind of continues and works nicely but uh, it doesn't work unfortunately the blocks kind of get stuck here and then just kind of glitch around so you want to make sure you don't actually put any uh, steel scaffolding there you'll see as soon as i got rid of that i picked up uh, five more iron ore that's it all just kind of backs up in that one slot which is not ideal while we were doing that we should have acquired enough uranium ingots to make four uranium blocks we have indeed and then from there we should be able to unlock the power research paper like so and with that we now have access to the power recipes such as the recipe here for dielectric paste so the dielectric paste is interesting because it is part of the automation that we're going to have to do if we want to automate the production of the ultimate technium ingot which is kind of my goal for today's episode so we need to automate these they're not difficult to make they require coal clay and lava buckets now i think what we might have to do here is either upgrade or duplicate our lava production system i think right now we're probably making more lava than we need but i don't know if we're making that much more lava we do have two choices we could either use another assembler because as we've seen already this can craft with fluids and it's easier than trying to set up a system that fills up lava buckets and then uh, puts them into a, a default crafter having the assembler just do it for us would be pretty easy you can also do that i believe with the uh, sequential fabricator from thermal expansion this is kind of the exact same as an assembler but it takes up a one block space instead of this uh, three by three block space that the assembler takes up and so we'll probably end up setting up one of these to make the dielectric paste for now we can make our first set of dielectric paste by just doing the crafting recipe manually again we can get a uh, bucket of lava using the recipe here i don't think you can use the ceramic bucket of lava to do the actual recipe for some reason but uh, if we once again do a quick one of these boom and boom we can then get ourselves our first batch of dielectric paste also one thing we have now unlocked because we have access to mechanism is mechanism tanks and so these are just different tiers of tanks they start out pretty small they hold 32 buckets worth and they go to very big this one holds 256 buckets worth and they're also super easy to make the first one here is just four iron and four redstone easy enough if you want to upgrade it you then need four infused alloy and four iron which we do not have we're very close how are we doing on infused crystalline we are fully backed up on that stuff now which you love to see we can of course throw that into our 
metallurgic infuser over here, although never mind, we've got 57 spare infused alloys that we must have left going at the end of the last episode. Boom! And then you can upgrade with reinforced alloy to the next tier, and so on and so forth. I don't think we need that just yet. My point in making this was that, one, we can use it whenever we uh, grab lava, so whenever we do the recipe like this, instead of putting it on the floor, we can just put it in the tank and then pick it up like that. That's a much safer way of doing it. And on top of that, what we should be able to do now is kind of place this tank above this lava generator as kind of a buffer for whenever we need lava. And as much as I like the pump here from Immersive Engineering, it's probably about time that we retire this pump because what we should be able to do instead is just drop down the tank like so. That's going to begin making lava and storing it in that tank. And then if we replace these fluid pipes here with fluid ducts from Thermal Dynamics, we can just run the fluid duct all the way around down to here and it should work in just the same way without having to have the big old pump from immersive engineering the fluid ducts are not particularly expensive and i do think it's going to look better if we make these windowed versions of the fluid ducts these require hardened glass but we do have a little bit of hardened glass in the system and we don't really need that many of these fluid ducts with these you can just see the lava moving through the pipe unlike the uh, previous pipes that were fully opaque so if we do this and we grab ourselves a server we can then drop the server on here this is where we want to extract from like that that's going to fill up with lava and send it back around to the bottling machine but now if there's ever a backlog of lava it will be available in this tank here right now it looks like we're surprisingly actually not backing up on lava at all but of course one thing we can do here is look at uh, upgrading these capstones just a little bit by swapping out the ruby for signalum blocks and there we go we're now getting lava just that little bit faster the twitch chat is also right there are a few ways we could have done this you don't have to use fluid ducts uh, laser io would have also worked we've not used any fluid cards yet but they work in the exact same way as the item card so we could have had a fluid card extracting from here and then connect it to a node down here that then inserts that same fluid and they're also um they're called mechanical pipes i believe from mechanism that allow you to move fluids as well these are also not too difficult to make but either way now that that is taken care of, back over here, we were working on the power quest line. So we have our dialect paste, and we can make quite a bit of it. You get 24 at a time here. It just requires three coal, one lava, and then two clay. Right now, we do have clay available, and there is a down crafting recipe for clay, and so I have a feeling that this should work. It totally does. And so what I think I might do here then is I might just swap out our pre-existing clay draw, which is this one here, for a compacting draw, like this, because then we can just go ahead and put all of the clay into the compacting draw here. Not only is the compacting draw bigger by default, it can hold more than this draw right here, but also it now gives us access to the clay in both block form and also in ball form. So uh, we can unlock this, and uh, we'll go ahead and pick this up because we might need it at some point in the not-so-distant future. But uh, if we now go and check in on our storage system we should see that we have access to 8,000 clay balls and so if we try this recipe again like so we can now just craft the dielectric paste nice so now the next quest wants us to make the dielectric rod and the horizontal version of the dielectric rod these are both made in the same way you make them with iron bars and dielectric paste i'm going to go ahead and make a stack of iron bars here maybe even two stacks of iron bars we can then do this and this that gets us dielectric rods and then you can just craft these directly into the horizontal version of the dielectric rods and that is both of those quests complete that then allows us to make the dielectric casing which requires two of each of the uh, vertical and horizontal dielectric rods and from there we just need some iron to craft that into a dielectric casing and the dielectric casing is kind of like the machine frame of the power mod it's used in a lot of the recipes here specifically we now need to use it to make an energizing rod and an energizing orb so i believe that both of these are going to require uh, some dielectric casing and so let's go ahead and make just a bunch of these uh, dielectric rods here and then let's craft at least half of them into their horizontal counterparts we'll then make just a few more of these two three four five maybe no you know what let's go for eight we can always make more of everything there in the future if we need to the energizing orb super easy five glass one dielectric casing and three horizontal rods and then the first energizing rod here is one steel one dielectric casing one dielectric rod and then two basic capacitors of the tiny variety so these are just made by downcrafting a basic capacitor which is made with dielectric paste iron and a block of redstone 
again, this is one of those situations where we did craft some blocks of redstone previously. But in an ideal world, we would have the compacting draw for redstone up and running because then it would just give us access to all of our redstone in dust and in block form. So we could definitely do with moving that at some point. But um, I don't really want to move it down to then move it all back up again. It's going to be a pain in the backside. But either way, now that we have the ability to uh, craft down that capacitor into a tiny capacitor, and then of course use that to make our starter rod, we can now use the energizing orb. The way this works is that uh, you place down the energizing orb and then you place down the energizing rods nearby on power cables. So I think we should be able to do it over here. If we put down the energizing rod like this, you'll see that that might be connected. I actually don't know, but no, it is connected. At the bottom there, it says stored 10,000 out of 10,000 FE. So if we do this, you can now use this energizing rod to power this energizing orb. Specifically, again, if we look down here, the uraninite here can be made by putting uranium ore directly into the energizing orb. So if I go and quickly steal a uranium ore from here, we can then right click to place that into the energizing orb, like so. And never mind, it turns out that totally does not work. I was under the impression we could turn the uranium ore directly into uraninite. But um, unfortunately, we are going to have to make the ingot first, and then we can turn one ingot of uranium into one ingot of uraninite. Interesting. Okay, that is kind of fine, because we do, of course, already have the system in place to turn the uranium ore into uranium ingots. We just need to get some conveyor belts. And then down here, we can, of course, just do one of these. And between streams, I did go ahead and add even more of these uh, vertical belts to the different corners of the base just to make it easier for us to expand out for more miners in the future and of course we could do with our engineer's hammer here to uh, rotate these conveyor belts boom 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 and that was already right isaac there we go boom perfect so that should kind of just work all we need to do is up here under the up section we need to add the uranium to the extractor for the induction smelter again we could pulverize it first but i don't think we're going to need to i think going to the induction smelter is going to be fine and then as per usual we'll take one of the uh non nice looking drawers and we'll use that for uranium ingots over here for the time being so we'll do this we'll do this and of course we'll lock it we should have an upgrade we do indeed and uh, if we do this that's now going to hold a ton of uranium and of course we can then take that uranium and now that we have the energizing orb we should be able to right click the uranium onto the energizing orb like so that's then going to get power from the energizing rod here and it takes thirty thousand redstone flux to convert one uranium ingot into one uraninite crystal and currently this energizing rod that we have if we type in energizing rod can only transfer a hundred redstone flux per tick so it's going to take a little bit of time but eventually it does it nice and so the idea here is that we can make that faster by upgrading the energizing rod. We could also make it faster by adding more energizing rods. If we had, you know, two, three, five, ten, twenty, it would go much faster because each one would be able to transfer 100 redstone flux per tick. But just by going from the starter rod to the energizing rod goes from 100 to 400, and then we can go up to 1,000, 4,000, uh, 10,000, 40,000, and 200,000 if we get all the way to the highest tier of energizing rod, allowing us to uh, charge things up very quickly inside of the energizing orb and the reason we want the uraninite as i mentioned at the start of the episode is that we need this in order to set up a reactor not only do we need it to craft the reactor which also by the way has tiers that's a starter then basic then hardened then blazing then nautic then spirited then nitro but the reactor itself also runs on the uraninite fuel now the starter reactor here is not particularly great you'll see that it only generates 250 redstone flux per tick which is kind of bad. I don't know how long one piece of uraninite lasts inside of a reactor, but I have a feeling that with the way this pack is set up, the fact that it costs 30,000 redstone flux to produce a reactor, there's a non-zero chance that using uraninite in a starter reactor might just lose you power. Because if uh, we take 30,000 and we divide that by 250, that's 120, it might last more than 120 ticks to be fair. That's only six seconds. I think one uraninite does last more than six seconds, even in a starter reactor. And so it's possible you do get some power, but the fact that it costs so much makes it quite likely that I think we should probably shoot for a higher tier reactor. There's also the thing to bear in mind that 
going to the effort of setting up a starter reactor is not really great if our lapidary dynamos are already capable of producing 480 redstone flux per tick with these auxiliary reaction chamber augments. And so we kind of want to shoot for one of the higher tier reactors here. We can't quite shoot for the highest tier, although that would be great. This one is the, the nitro here, which can produce 500,000 redstone flux per tick, which is, is great, but it does require nitro crystals, which require nether stars that we don't quite have the ability to make just yet. However, if we put the time into it, I think we could get up to a spirited reactor, which can produce 100,000 redstone flux per tick, which I think is good. That's a good bump over the current amount of power that we're producing and should give us enough power to push a little bit further on through the pack and should give us the wiggle room to, you know, fully upgrade our mechanism machines and whatnot and make things nice and fast without worrying too much about our power situation. So if we want to upgrade these, we've got a lot of crafting to do. We've got a lot of energizing to do. The initial reactor isn't too difficult. To make this, you need uraninite, you need basic capacitors, and you need dielectric casing. The only trouble is that you need 36 reactor blocks in order to build a reactor, and you make four at a time. So you do have to do this recipe multiple times here, and really the only problem for us is lava. Like, it's getting the lava in bucket form, and then using that to craft the dielectric paste. Everything else is easy enough, but would you look at that? We actually have lava backing up now, which is good, and... Did we make a reservoir? We did make a reservoir in a previous episode, and we upgraded it to be able to hold 40 buckets worth of lava. And so if I quickly just go ahead and swap this to fill mode by pressing V, we can then steal all 37 buckets out of that tank. And then I believe we can just use this in the crafting of dielectric paste. So if I do this, that doesn't work, eh? I really thought that that would work. If I set it to empty mode, still doesn't work. That <laughs> is very unfortunate. Sometimes that works. Um, and sometimes it doesn't, apparently. That is not ideal. Alternatively, I guess what we should probably do, given that we're going to have to do it anyway, is uh, just go to the effort of automating it. Uh, we mentioned earlier the sequential fabricator. If we're going to automate ultimate technium today, we have to automate dielectric paste anyway. And so, real quick, all we need to make the sequential fabricator is another machine frame. And boom, there's our sequential fabricator. And as I mentioned earlier, much like with... The assembler here, the sequential fabricator can receive a fluid and then use that fluid in its crafting operation. Now, there used to be an augment called the pattern validation augment, which I don't believe exists anymore. I think that's fine because we can use the exporter with the, uh, the stock card to limit the amount of items that go in here. And uh, the problem that we could run into is uh, too many of one item filling up all the input buffers. But again, the stock card kind of uh, negates that from being a possibility and so we would need an export cable that's fine and we would of course need the stock card as well fantastic and we also need some power do we have power via a flux point we do and you can pull power directly out of a flux point and so if we just put a flux duct down right about here that's going to pull power from that flux point and then we can pump it into this sequential fabricator and that should work it totally does of course we do want to make sure that we put a storage drawer on here that's where all of our dielectric paste is going to go and that will set you to output to the top the only question now is how we want to get lava into here because of course we have the lava over here ready to go it's whether or not we think we want to set up another fluid absorber or if we just want to use this fluid absorber i think we can probably quite safely just use this fluid absorber again i think that should be fine and what I might do, there's two things we could do. We could just run a fluid duct underground to the sequential fabricator. And I kind of think I might just do that. I think that's going to be easy enough. I do want to know, actually, if I can connect the opaque fluid ducts to the windowed fluid ducts. We have some opaque ones here. If I put that down, that does connect. Nice. Okay, in that case, then, I'm probably just going to go ahead and craft a bunch of these my other plan was potentially to use laser io we could again put down a laser potentially here and then run another one over to here and then have a few uh, connector nodes along the top but i don't think it looked good running along the top here and so my second thought was to put like another tank in the ground here and then use laser io to carry the fluid over but if we're going to go to that effort i feel like at that point we might as well just use the fluid duct, given that it's quicker easier and simpler right there's no real reason i don't think to use laser wire 
over the flue ducts here, given the flue ducts are so easy to make, and we're already using the flue ducts to move lava from one place to another. So if we just do something like this, it does definitely look less good on the underside of the platform, but we should now be able to set the bottom of this to input, like that, and we should hopefully start to see that filling up with lava, so long as that has connected correctly. So I'm being told by the Twitch chat here that the tank won't fill up until we set a recipe. That is fine. So we need to get one bucket of lava. That is not a problem. We'll take this one and we'll just fill it up over here. Easy enough. And then we need uh, clay and we need coal, both of which, thankfully, we have in abundance and both of which we're making continually as well. So over here, we do need to put down the export cable. We'll put that down like that. And of course, we'll connect that up in just a second. We'll set you to input. Fantastic. We'll put in the stock upgrade. And I'll say that we want to keep just half a stack of both of these. I think that's completely fine. And then in here, we want to say that uh, three coal along with two clay and one lava equals dielectric paste and tick. And you'll see instantly it filled up with lava. Fantastic. And so now if we were to grab some network cable and connect that export cable up to the main network, we should just start to see this working. Now, as per usual, we do have the option of downgrading this draw to hold less, but I don't think we need to. We've got thousands and thousands of clay and coal, and we're going to kind of struggle with lava anyway, and so I don't think we necessarily need to bother with the downgrade. I, I do think we're going to need way more than 64 dielectric pairs today, and so uh, the more, the merrier, really, in terms of making this. Uh, we'll make sure the top set to output, and we'll turn auto eject on, and yeah, that should just kind of work. You'll see the coal's there, the clay's there. The limiting factor here does seem to be speed. And so we could try whacking a speed upgrade into there. Again, it's just a visual glitch when it doesn't connect. It is still sending all the items required. And there we go. We've got hundreds of dielectric paste and more being made every second. Nice. Uh, of course, ideally, we would put down another link cable there to connect that to the main system so we don't have to keep coming back over here every time we want to get more dielectric paste and so a quick one of those should do the trick and now we should be able to start work on those reactors so the first tier of reactor the starter reactor is just 36 of these guys right here that means we need to do this recipe nine times and so we're going to need a bunch more of the uh, dielectric casing here uh, probably even more than we have currently that is fine give me even more iron bars and then give me even more dielectric rods and then let's get four stacks of those and then let's craft two of those stacks into uh, horizontal rods like that fantastic and from there we should be able to craft a bunch of dielectric casing fantastic 64 is great and with that we then need a bunch of these capacitors also not a problem i will go ahead and just craft up a bunch of redstone blocks here a couple of stacks would be very useful we can then craft a bunch of those capacitors down into baby capacitors. And then from there, we should have everything, I think. Oh, no, actually, that's not true at all. We should be getting closer to being able to make this happen. We, of course, do need to get a bunch of uraninite, which means we need a bunch of uranium. Now, there's a slight awkward situation with the energizing orb, and that is that you can't put in more than is required. If I put in too many uranium ingots, even just a second one, you'll see it doesn't work. You have to have, and by the way, you can just right-click to pull out the item you don't want in there, you have to have exactly the right amount of items in the energizing orb for the craft to work. And so in the case of making the uraninite here, we have to have exactly one uranium ingot in the energizing orb at any given time, no more, no less. And so that makes it a little trickier to automate. However, this is where, once again, our good friend Laser IO comes to the rescue. So we need one more laser connector to make another laser node. And we'll also grab a chest as well so we'll put the chest down right about here we'll put the laser node right about here and then we're going to need a couple of item cards if we want to make this work we do have one in our inventory which is quite nice but i think we're going to need maybe four in total so what we should be able to do here is we should be able to utilize this guy the counting filter to specify how many items we want going into the energizing orb so to make the counting filter, we first make the basic filter that we made previously, and then we craft that with a dropper, which is uh, very easy. And that allows us to make a counting filter like that. Not quite sure why the recipe didn't shift click in, but that's fine. And so over on this side, we should be able to set this to insert. And then inside the item card, we want to put the counting filter and we want to say 
exactly one uranium ingot. If you put more in, by the way, it will do all of them. We want to do exactly one uranium ingot like that. You can also click to increase the number and then right click to decrease the number if you want to specify uh, how many without actually having that many in your inventory, which is pretty cool. But then over here, if we put the uranium in and we take our extract card here, which is just set to extract, and we put it in this side, the east side, that should extract one uranium from here and put it in. And you'll see it's not going to extract any more because there's already one uranium in here. Now, what should happen when this completes is it should put another uranium in, but then we're still going to have the uraninite in here. And so what we need to do is we need to take that uraninite out of here and put it into this chest. Thankfully, we can do that. If we take one of our basic filters, we can set another card here to extract with a filter, and I want you to extract uraninite. And so if we then put that card in here, we can then put another card in on this side. This card uh, is going to be set to insert. I don't think we need to specify that it's going to insert uraninite, but you know what? Just to be safe, let's change this card to channel one, and we'll also change this insert card to channel one as well. And then if we put that in here, that's going to pull the uraninite out, and it's going to send another uranium over. Nice. And so now this is just going to slowly but surely work on turning all of this uranium into uraninite, which is good. Now, there are a few things we can do here. One is uh, we can look at getting either more or upgraded energizing rods. So the basic energizing rod is actually not too difficult to make. Annoyingly, though, we don't have access to nether quartz, which is a real pain in the backside. And so I think we're going to have to divert our thought process, actually, because I was hoping we could get these somewhat easily, but we can't. People are suggesting time in a bottle. It could work, but I don't think it's a long-term solution. We need to do a lot of energizing. Just to give you a, 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 an idea here, if we wanted to get to the spirited reactor, we have to make 36 starter reactor. We then have to upgrade 36 starter reactor to basic and then upgrade all 36 to hardened and then all 36 to blazing, then to anarchic and then to spirited. And as we move up the chain here, every time we need to make a new type of capacitor. So the first one requires a tiny capacitor. The next one requires a basic capacitor, which is two of the basic capacitors crafted together into a large one. We then need hardened. The hardened requires energized steel. The energized steel is made in the energizing orb. Easy enough. But then after that, we need blazing crystals. These are also made in the energizing orb. They require a lot more power. Then we need the niotic crystals, again in the energizing orb with even more power. And then after that, we need the spirited crystals, again in the energizing orb with even more power. So we really need to get those higher tier energizing rods if we're going to get anywhere close to the spirited reactor. Thankfully, we can unlock nether quartz. The way that we do it is by unlocking either refined storage or applied energistics. Over here in the ultimate research, if we unlock either one of these, we unlock nether quartz. You'll see here also unlocks quartz ore, also unlocks quartz ore. And so we can do this, I think. To do it, we have to get four ultimate technium ingots and then choose which one we want to, to make. The four ultimate technium ingots should be very straightforward, though. We've already automated the infused crystalline. We've already automated the dielectric paste. Automating the uranium sheet metal is not going to be difficult. We've already automated lead sheet metal and aluminum sheet metal. It's going to be the exact same situation. We're going to have a multi server press that makes uranium plates, like we're doing here for uh, aluminum and like we're doing here for lead. And then we're going to have just a crafting table that turns those plates into sheet metal. And then we'll go store them in a drawer. Easy peasy. Not a problem. The only thing that's slightly difficult about the automation of the ultimate technium ingots is the automation of the atomic alloys, which also shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. The only slight problem we could run into is potentially one of power, but I guess let's do a little bit of a diversion here. We'll come back to the reactor. Let's see if we can't automate the ultimate technium. For then, we're going to need, I think, just a series of metallurgic infusers because the atomic alloys are made in a metallurgic infuser. To make it work, we need refined obsidian dust and we need reinforced alloys. The reinforced alloys also made in a metallurgic infuser with enriched diamond and an infused alloy. The infused alloy is made with the infused crystal and we'll probably go with enriched redstone just to make it uh, efficient. And you can also enrich the uh, refined obsidian, which I guess we might as well also do. We'll bookmark that as well. So I think we need three metallurgic infusers, one for infused alloys, one for reinforced alloys and one for atomic alloys. And then I think we also need three enrichment chambers, one for the enriched obsidian, one for the enriched redstone, one for the enriched diamonds. And then we do also need to automate the production of obsidian as well. Chat is right that currently we don't have it. However, we can now automate it with the miner. That is fantastic. Obsidian. At the time that we first got it, I don't think we had access to diamonds. But now that we have access to diamonds, we can, of course, just get some more of the uh, tier 7 support frame. 
I am probably going to go with the tier 8 support frame here, just because that way we can uh, very easily place this down next to our pre-existing uranium miner. So we can just put it right here and uh, begin getting obsidian that way. Also, we should probably almost definitely look at uh, putting some caps on the uranium miner as well. And we'll do the same with the obsidian miner here to maximize obsidian throughput. That is not where that is meant to go, Isaac. But uh, once we have this down, it's just a case of making three metallurgic infusers, making three enrichment chambers. And then from there, it should all just be a job of configuring those machines. All right, so the obsidian miner is down. I have added the ruby blocks to all of the miners here, and I've connected up the obsidian to the network with the filtered link cable. And I've also quickly crafted up four more metallurgic infusers and four more enrichment chambers. I think I said three of each earlier. I think four is the actual number required. So the idea here is that we first need to make the basic alloy, right? The infused alloy. For that, we need to export redstone and infused crystalline. That should be easy enough. Let's put a metallurgic infuser, say, right about here. Actually, no. Let's put it maybe here, and let's put the enrichment chamber next to it. This enrichment chamber is going to take redstone and turn it into enriched redstone. Of course, it needs redstone dust. So we're going to get, uh, of course, multiple more uh, exporters to allow us to set this whole system up here. We'll take you, and we'll do something like this uh, you're going to export redstone into the enrichment chamber and then that is going to uh, take that redstone turn it into the enriched redstone which we then want to auto reject on to the right hand side so we're going to input from the bank output to the right and then the metallurgic infuser we're going to set the yellow side here on the left that's going to bring in the uh, redstone the infused redstone and then in here we also want another exporter on the bank like so that is going to send over these guys, the infused crystalline, and then from there, that's going to produce the infused alloy, and then that infused alloy can probably go into a draw, but we could also just pump it directly into the next metallurgic infuser, right? And if we do it that way, hmm, yeah, I think we could probably do that, actually. I'm thinking about kind of swapping this around a bit, because I'm kind of thinking that if we change these round we can probably just do enrichment chamber metallurgic infuser redstone into basic infused alloy then we can do another metallurgic infuser another enrichment chamber this one is going to make the enriched diamond and then it's going to send it over into here this metallurgic infuser is going to send its infused alloys just straight forward into here to make the reinforced alloys and then we can have another metallurgic infuser with another enrichment chamber like that this one is going to make the enriched obsidian send it over into here Again, this guy is going to send the elite reinforced alloys, send them over into here and make the atomic alloys. I keep saying elite reinforced alloys. That's just because the uh, reinforced alloys, they make the elite control circuits. I keep thinking that it goes advanced and then elite, but it doesn't. It's reinforced. So that's going to make atomic. And then the last two machines here are just for the sake of making refined obsidian, because for the first two, we just need redstone to make enriched redstone, and then we need diamond to make enriched diamonds. However, the enriched obsidian requires refined obsidian dust first. Refined obsidian dust is made in another metallurgic infuser with diamonds again, right here. So I guess we'll put that one next to the diamond system, which is this one. So this is hopefully going to output its uh, enriched diamonds to both of these metallurgic infusers. And then from there, we need to take that refined obsidian dust and send that round into this enrichment chamber. That's fine. We can put a little cable here. And then to make the obsidian dust, we just need an enrichment chamber. We can put that enrichment chamber here. So it's not the most attractive system in the world, but I think it's going to work surprisingly well. So if I grab another uh, laser node, we can stick that in the corner and we can use that in laser node to move the um the obsidian to become enriched obsidian i do need some more glass panes here thankfully a few episodes back we did fix our glass situation so we always have glass available now i'm gonna make just a few stacks of glass panes so i don't have to do this again in the future let's do at least one of these and let's put that right about here so we now need to export to quite a few of these we need to export to actually I think we just need to export to this, these two, and this. So I think we just need four export cables down at the bottom here. We need one that is going to export the infused crystalline. So we'll take one of those. We need one that is going to export redstone. We need one that's going to export uh, diamonds. 
and we need one that is going to export obsidian. I think that's kind of it. I think that's all we need for this setup. Uh, we do need power here, of course. Chat will do that in just a second. But uh, let's go one, two, three, and four, like that. And then we'll get rid of this guy right here. And so you are going to export the infused crystalline. And uh, sending a full stack is fine. We don't need a stock upgrade. You are going to export the redstone, like that. Uh, you are going to export the obsidian. And you are going to export the diamonds. Once that's done, we can then hook this up, like so. And those should begin to fill. Let me get some power to these guys. We are probably just going to do something like this. And then potentially even just something like this as well. Uh, you can use the crescent hammer to disconnect certain connections if you want. We don't need to, but aesthetically, I think it's going to look better if we do this. And uh, also if we do this, of course, like that. So now that this is, is kind of all powered up, we, uh, we should be good to go. This is going to turn redstone into enriched redstone. We want to make sure that it imports from the bottom now. So we want to put the input on the bottom like that and outputs to the right. That's still correct. Over here, this is already set to input its uh, yellow extra slot from the left, which is correct. Uh, we want you to also import from the bottom. So the red side, that should send over the infused crystals. And then we're going to turn auto eject on and we're going to set the front to blue output. And so now all of the alloys should get pushed forward into here. In here, we want to set the all of these to off to begin with. So just shift left click. Uh, we're going to turn auto eject on. We're going to set the left to yellow, just like before. We're going to set the bank to input and we're going to set the front to output. So that should start receiving the infused alloys. It does over here. This needs to be input at the bottom, which is by default. Uh, it's going to output to the right hand side, which is this one here, auto output on. And that's going to take the uh, in which diamonds push them into here. That's going to start turning those infused alloys into reinforced alloys. And then those reinforced alloys are eventually going to end up over here. Over here, we want to set again the back to input, the left to yellow, and I guess the right to output. I guess we'll put our uh, storage drawer that is going to hold the final tier of alloy there, like that. So that is kind of everything up to the reinforced alloy taken care of. Now we just need to automate the obsidian. Over here, the obsidian dust is being made. So we just need to make sure that the bottom is set to input, which it is. And then we need the front, which is the side facing this metallurgic infuser, to be the output. So auto eject on and output. Then in here, we're going to set the bank to input, which is this slot here. That should receive the obsidian dust. It does. And we want to set the right hand side to output. Auto eject on. Uh, actually, no, we don't want to do that. We want to turn auto eject off and we want to set the front to output. That's my bad. What we also want to do though is back over here, we want to set this enrichment chamber to also output on the left so that it should send some of the enriched diamonds over to here. Now, it's possible that I don't necessarily know how um, mechanism decides which machine to send that to. It looks like right now it's sending them all here, but this is pretty close to being filled up. Once this does fill up, it's possible it might then fill up this slot here fully. Yeah, it looks like it is doing that. That's kind of fine. We can use some speed upgrades in the future, but eventually it should send it over into here once it has maybe nowhere else to go. But once this gets some diamonds, which it will do, then that's going to use the diamonds to turn the obsidian here into refined obsidian dust. What we want to then do is grab two more item cards, one and two. We're going to set one of these to extract. And then all we're going to do is we're going to extract from this side, the side facing the metallurgic infuser, and we're going to insert into this enrichment chamber. Here, we want the left to be input and the right to be output, auto eject on. What this is going to do is it's going to take the refined obsidian dust and it's going to put it in here. That is going to turn it into enriched obsidian, which again is just more efficient. You get more refined obsidian in the metallurgic infuser and it's able to make more of the atomic alloys. And with that, we're kind of good to go. This whole system will now produce an unlimited amount of atomic alloys. However, of course, what we can do here is we can look at uh, making it just that little bit better. Uh, did I set this to auto eject on? I did not. Let's try that auto eject on. Perfect. And we can lock that. So we can make this better, of course, with speed and energy upgrades. Oh, chat is right. I didn't set this to yellow. That is why. Oh, that's at least one of the reasons why it's not putting any enriched diamonds in there. Let's see if this one goes over to here. It didn't, I don't think. So I actually don't know if it's going to 50-50 divide them or again, if it's going to fill up one of them first. But at least now we're going to have a slightly better idea. It's still putting them all in here. Again, that's fine. Once we have speed upgrades in, I think we're very quickly going to fill all of these up and it's not going to be a problem whatsoever. But this is, is, is all good to go. And we can, of course, just put a link cable on 
the bottom of that to make it accessible to the system. And so now, Chad, I think we're kind of at the point where we can look at actually automating the... Let's do it like this, I guess, even though this would have been substantially easier. Let me take some of these back. Uh, but we can finally look at the point of actually automating the ultimate technium ingot, because if we look at this again, uh, it's just uranium sheet metal. We have the infused crystalline, we have the dielectric paste, we have the atomic alloys, we have the elite technium. All we need to do is get the uranium sheet metal set up in the exact same way that we've done twice already. And speaking of things we've done twice already, we also then need to do the exact same thing with the draw controller and the storage drawers and the exporting the stuff to set up the advanced crafting. And then we're going to be good to go. And we can also potentially look at putting a bunch of speed and energy upgrades into some of these machines here to make these atomic alloys just that little bit faster. All right, so not too long later, I have duplicated the same setup that you've seen too many times at this point. Over here, we have our exporter right here, exporting uranium ingots to the multi server press. Those then get sent around into here in their plate form. Down here, we've got an auto crafter that auto crafts the uranium plates into uranium sheet metal. And then that gets passed through into this uranium sheet metal drawer, which is connected with a link cable. Over here, we've got an export cable. I've put down another draw controller, which I purchased from the shop because we still can't make these because we still don't have access to nether quartz. But uh, right here, we've got the infused crystalline, dielectric paste, uranium sheet metal, atomic alloys, and elite technium. All we need to do is uh, actually take one of each of those and add it to the list because I uh, have not done that yet. So back here, we need to do this, 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 uh, not that, this, and this. All of these have storage downgrades in them. So this has got a storage downgrade. 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 And this has got a storage downgrade. And we didn't even put a storage downgrade on the atomic alloy drawer as well to allow our system to back up on other alloys. And with that, we should start to back up, I think, on basically everything here, which should be good. And then down here, we just need to put it all together, right? So let's take, I think it's eight sheet metal along with, I think it's four dielectric paste, or it might be more. I also think it's four atomic alloys, which for now I guess we'll steal from here because it's taking a second to send them over. I then think we need eight of these and then just one of these. So the recipe, which we're going to turn off for now, is I think this with these in the corners. Then I believe we have this like that. Then I think it's this and this. It might be the other way around. Nope, that's perfect. Cool. Can we shift click the recipe? Does that work? That might actually work. Hold on, let me let me try that because that's probably the easier way of doing it in the future. Uh, if you just uh, go ahead and uh, move items, that totally does work. My bad. Uh, shift up, click to store, and then left click again to select. Perfect. And turn it on. And that's going to start making all of the ultimate ingots. One thing we can do just to make this a little bit faster is make a few more of these speed upgrades, throw those in to this export cable, and that's going to start to uh, export the items that it has access to just that little bit faster to uh, to fill all these up just that little bit quicker. And that should hopefully just work. Um, I can't help but notice it's not sending that much elite technium over. We are fully backed up on everything, by the way, at this point. Like all of these are all fully backed up, which is why we we're backing up on so much iron at the start of the episode. Like here, we're just fully backed up on all of the previous tiers of technium, which is, is fantastic. But uh, it's not sending that over. I'm pretty sure we did put a link cable down here, right? We did, so that is accessible by the system. Oh, there we go, I think it's moving now. I think it just took a second to figure it out. Yes, okay, perfect, look at that, nice. So this is coming in. We have now four ultimate technium. We have completed yet another chapter in the quest book. We do, of course, as Chat has pointed out, need to block out this hopper here just to make sure that uh, we don't end up with you know five stacks of ultimate technium backing up in there because that would not be ideal. Because of course now we're gonna start a cascade where we're gonna start using everything again because we're going to take a stack of these which requires a stack of these which requires a stack of these and so everything is going to kick into gear once more which could potentially cause a power problem we're not actually making that much power i didn't put any speed upgrades in this just yet or energy upgrades i don't know if we need to to be honest like they're not the limiting factor right now and i think even with the slow setup that we currently have this is working just fine we obviously have the option in the future of speeding all this up uh, either with factories or with speed and energy upgrades but for the time being this is uh, is working just fine, and I don't think we're going to need, you know, hundreds of ultimate technium in a short period of time either. So I think we're pretty good on that going forward. So now that we have the ultimate technium, we can go back to the ultimate research tab. But there's a few things we can unlock. We can unlock ender chests, which is just the ender storage mod, which also gives us access to ender tanks, which would have been useful earlier for uh, transporting lava over. But right now, I don't really think we need it. 
There's also villager trades, allowed to trading with villagers. I have yet to see a villager, and so I don't really think that we need any villager trades. And then the other two things that we have, the important things for this chapter, are applied energistics and refined storage. Now, looking ahead, I actually don't know if we need to set up a refined storage or an applied energistics 2 system. Because I think the hellish technium should be pretty similar to the pre-existing technium. Like, I don't think it's going to be too difficult to set up the, uh, the the next tiers of technium. I think for the most part, they're going to be kind of the same as what we already have. And I think we could probably do that with our simple storage network. But we do have to unlock one of these two if we want to unlock nether quartz. And so I think I'm going to go with applied energistics 2, which I know is the less popular option, I think. I think most people are going to go with refined storage. But that's kind of my reasoning for going for it. I feel like... A lot of the times we play a lot of mod packs and usually you don't get the choice. Usually it's just refined storage. That's kind of the default. And so I think that for now, I'm probably just going to go with applied energistics. And uh, if we do end up setting up a system, then we'll go with an applied energistics system. So uh, is there a book for it? There totally is. And for it, we need four blocks of diamond. Super easy at this point. We've got 44,000 diamonds uh, with, of course, the research paper and the ultimate technium. Boom. And boom. We also need 16 tech books. Right now we've got 19, that is more than enough. Boom, and boom, and then we can also hand in eight more tech books to get this mysterious cube, which I think is definitely worth investing in. Um, also, we can, if we want, purchase the next tier, I believe, of tech books, which is under remaining research, tech books five. This is gonna require a few ultimate ingots, but again, we've got so many of them over here. So we can take another four of those, and then tech books. Can I make tech books four? I can't. <laughs> That's fine. Let me make like one of these. And then let's do this to get tech books four. Let's hand that in. We need 16 tech books to do it. Gosh dang it, Ben. That's fine. Let me do... Um, and 16 is such an awkward number because it's not even like it's two of these. I have to do three lots of this recipe to actually hand that in and unlock it. At that point, it was probably not worth it to go through the effort of unlocking the recipe. Like we probably could have just used... Uh, the previous tier and just crafted it but now we have access to this which is not even that good of a conversion like you only get three more than the previous tier mm, probably not worth it but now that we have the recipe might as well go ahead and use it we'll take this we'll do this we'll take this and then we should be able to purchase this not strictly necessary just yet uh, but this mysterious cube will be useful in the future uh, if we do end up setting a refined storage system up and running but we, more importantly, should now have access to Nether Quartz here in the store. And we have exactly the right number of tech books available. Boom and boom. This requires... I have a sneaking suspicion that it's going to require a Netherite Miner, and I'm going to be a little annoyed. It doesn't, thankfully. Okay, thank you, Ben. It requires a Tier 7 support frame. I thought for a second it might require this Tier 9 support frame, which um, I think we are going to need fairly soon for some other resources. But... We can, in fact, go over here and we can continue our emerald setup here. I didn't want this one, of course. Thankfully, they uh, don't break into nether quartz. That would have been a bit of a pin in the backside. We should still have uh, two almost broken diamond ones that I was using between streams to build our new platforms out, but they should be durable enough to hopefully do this. They are indeed fantastic. And of course, we have more than enough emeralds to make the remaining support frame here. And boom, there we go. We now have, of course, our miner for nether quartz going a little bit faster. And nether quartz always being made. We're extracting it, of course, sending it up and around into our processing plant. Uh, you can either run this through the induction smelter to get one nether quartz or to the pulverizer to get two nether quartz. And so I feel like we might as well send it through the purple line here. We'll throw it in like that. And that should run it through to one of the pulverizers like so. And we're going to get nether quartz, which, of course, uh, we want to take and add to yet another storage drawer on our storage drawer wall over here. So we'll throw that down like that, drop you in, lock that drawer, and continue our pattern of getting tier 5 storage upgrades and throwing those in just to give us a ton of space. And so now that we actually have nether quartz, we do now have the ability, finally, to look at getting higher tier energizing rods so you need four nether quartz in order to make the next energizing rod and hopefully that is ready to go it is uh, you do need the previous tier of energizing rod as well so we are going to have to steal this one 
and slap it down like that. That gets us a basic energizing rod up from a starter, so now this can do four times as much. And then each progressive tier of this does require another block of quartz, which is easy enough. And as I mentioned before, it also requires these different tiers of capacitor. So there's the hardened capacitor, which requires the energized steel. I'm going to bookmark these now. So I'll bookmark energized steel. Then there is the uh, blazing capacitor, which requires blazing crystals. Then there's the niotic capacitor, niotic crystals, and the spirited capacitor, which requires spirited crystals. So the first tier is pretty easy. It requires steel and it requires gold. You put one steel and one gold in, like so, you drop down your energizing rod, and that should transform into energized steel. Pretty easy stuff. And again, we could do a similar thing that we've done before, where over here, we set the insert card to one gold and one steel. And then over here, we can do this and put like a full stack in. That should take one of each out. That should then transform it into energized steel. And then, of course, we can add the energized steel to the uh, extraction filter as well. And now this is fully automated. It's going to take all of the golden steel it's going to turn it all into energized steel which is pretty good and then uh, over here we want to then use that energized steel to make these hardened capacitors which do require these uh, slightly chunkier large capacitors which we definitely can make and then boom we have two hardened capacitors which as it turns out is enough to upgrade our previous energizing rod assuming we have a block of nether quartz we can then take this guy away do one of these with you here they don't shift click in for whatever reason and then uh, we take this and we put it down and this is now capable of transferring up to a thousand redstone flux per tick which as you can see here makes this even faster it's making those uh, energized steel even quicker than before uh, but now we need to get blazing crystal blazing crystal is where it gets a little bit tricky because for this we need blaze powder and while we do have blaze powder the way that we get blaze powder is via the redstone flux coils, and I think that's the only way for us to get these coils. Unless there's a, a way for us to get these uh, this mob essence, which there might be, uh, by placing an advanced mob essence block in a pool of lightning water and using an upgraded catalyst on it, you can get this essence. That might be a quest for the future. I feel like I might have seen that. Yeah, I feel like down here under the essence quest line is uh, when we unlock the ability to, um, to make those without having to, to pulverize flux coils. However, the flux coils are easy to make. I feel like we could easily throw away a couple of stacks of redstone and a couple of stacks of gold. We've got 106,000 redstone and we have got probably not anywhere near as much gold, but still 20,000 gold. We can easily make many, many stacks of blaze powder. And then uh, if we take these out for now, we can throw one, two, three, four blaze powder into here. That's then gonna transform into the blazing crystal. And again here, we can go ahead and kind of do the same thing. This time around, we want to make sure that we set this to five and not to one because we want five blaze powder. And we also want to, of course, add the blazing crystal to the extraction. And now if we put in uh, a nice multiple of five into here, it's going to transform all of those blaze powder into blazing crystals, ideally. Oh, it's four, not five. That's my bad. Let me change this to four like that. Then take those out. Perfect. Still a little slow could be faster. Of course, we can make more of these. Like, we don't have to just make one. We should probably look at making multiple of the starter versions, upgrading those to multiple of the basic, then multiple of the hardened, then multiple of the um, the blazing and kind of working up like that. I think we need four if we're going to upgrade. We do need four if we're going to make two capacitors. And thankfully, we're almost there, actually. This one's basically done. And so any second now, we should get our fourth crystal. With that, we can then go ahead and make two of these. With two of those, we should then be able to make one of these. Again, assuming we can make one more block of quartz, which we definitely can. We can make a stack of quartz blocks now. Fantastic. And of course, as per usual, we need to steal this guy right here. Throw him in at the bottom. And we now have one that can transfer 4,000 redstone flux per tick. And of course, at a certain point, we are getting close to the just limit on how much power we're making. Um, I don't know if we're making 4,000 redstone flux per tick at the minute. And so going higher than this right now is probably not massively useful like we've got 10 dynamos here even if we maxed out all of them that would only get us 4800 redstone flux per tick and right now they're not all maxed out so right now there's no reason to go above the blazing energizing rod however if we want to go higher the niotic crystal here requires one diamond and 300 000 redstone flux so this one is going to take 
not that long, actually. It's actually surprisingly fast. Uh, we do need, I think, 16 of these, though, because unlike with the Blazing Crystals and all the tiers before it, um, the Blazing Capacitor you get two at a time, whereas I'm pretty sure the Nautic Capacitor and... Yeah, and the Spirited Capacitor, both of these you just get one at a time, and we still need four. So we need 16 Spirited Crystals and 16 Niotic Crystals, which means we have to put in 15 more diamonds. And of course, we could do with adding diamonds to the insert list on here. Again, one at a time is all we want, and then we'll add the Niotic Crystals to the extraction list, like that, and then we can put all those in, like so, and that should begin turning them all into what they need to be. And then the slightly harder bit that shouldn't be too difficult, but, you know, might be a little difficult, is making the um, the, the Spirited Crystals, because these require just over triple the amount of power that the Nautic Crystals require, and again, we need 16 of them if we're going to make um, Spirited Rods, but again, there's no real point in making those because we don't have access to that much power just yet. And so, at that point, it's kind of a case of going back to the reactors and, uh, and seeing about upgrading those. Upgrading from basic to starter just requires the capacitors these large capacitors here did we make the starter reactor we didn't interesting because we didn't have the uraninite of course and uh, now that we've got uranium we can begin making that uraninite and oh no we did make some uraninite it's in here okay it was so long ago now i feel like i've lost track of where we were that's fine let me make ideally 36 of this that should be another quest line complete it is nice and with that we can then hopefully begin to upgrade to the next tier here. We are going to need a lot of these if we're gonna make this happen. I feel like we're gonna need 36 of these, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh no, we don't need 36 of these. I think we need some amount of these. Oh no, yeah, I think actually 36 is correct because it's four to four. It's, a, it's like a one to one ratio. That is fine. These are super easy to make now that we have basically everything here automated, so that's not a problem. And then we can just take those and craft them up like that. And that's a stack of them perfect. And then boom, there's 36 basic. Moving from basic to hardened is where it starts to get tricky though, because again, now we need to get 36 of these hardened capacitors, and so we do need more of this energized steel. Again, now that we're going a little faster, it probably shouldn't be that difficult. If we put kind of just a bunch of gold and a bunch of uh, silver in there, we do run into a slight problem if you put everything in at once, where uh, it will just try and make everything at once, which is obviously not ideal. Let me take out some of the stuff that's in here, and if you try and put in too much stuff, there we go, that's what I want. Perfect. Uh, if you put in too much stuff, you have to take it all out one by one, which is also uh, not great. But uh, this is working. You'll see it's quite fast here. It's not super fast, though. And the thing that's limiting us currently is the speed of the, uh, the laser node, actually. And so we could do with an overclocker or two, actually. If we take some card overclockers, right now it's extracting once per tick, so once every uh, second. If we put the node overclockers in here, we can actually lower that to, uh, to half a tick. And if we go a bit further, I think I have some logic chips cooking up somewhere. I remember smelting some up between episodes. Actually, I think they might be in my energized smelter. Let me quickly check in here. They are indeed fantastic. Yes. So over here, we should now be able to make some more overclockers. If we put those into the extraction card like that, I think four is the max. We can then lower this to one tick. So it's going to pull every tick. And then over here, we can do the exact same thing again. We can get four more. And on this side, we want to take this extractor and also set it to one tick. So now you'll see it's going substantially faster than it was previously, and you'll see that we're making this energized steel a lot quicker than we were before. Someone in Twitch chat is telling me to export eight instead of one. That is not worthwhile, because there is a, we're only exporting one at a time. So exporting eight would not change it at this point, uh, but this should be more than enough, actually. If we go back to the reactor, the hardened reactor requires a bunch of these. Let's do... This, 64, is more than enough. And then we can do, of course, one of these and these. And then we've got 36 hardened reactor. And so now it's onto Blaze. Unfortunately, the hardened reactor is just not particularly great. It only produces 2,500 redstone flux per tick. The Blaze reactor is kind of where it gets interesting. But this episode has already gone on far too long, chat. And so I think what we'll do next time, we'll come back. We will kind of continue through this line. What I will probably do between streams is uh, maybe just look at getting uh, a few more of these energizing rods, potentially. Although, actually, what I'll probably do between streams is just make uh, even more of these Niotic Crystals, kind of just stick some diamonds uh, into this chest and let them do their thing. We can also uh, do the same thing with emeralds here as well. Of course, we can set this to insert on emerald, and if we put the emeralds in, that should get us the Spirited Crystal. This one is going to take by far the longest, 
thankfully it's not super slow. It's also not super fast either, though. So it's definitely gonna take a while to get enough spirited crystal to make 36 spirited reactor because we need what 36 spirited capacitors and each spirited capacitor requires four spirited crystal and so we need 144 of these which means we have to spend 144 million redstone flux to make it happen which is doable for sure but uh, it's just gonna take a, a little bit of time for us to do that's fine though we can uh, go ahead and just like you know throw um 144 in this chest like so and then slowly but surely those will get transformed into spirited crystals for us and then we can use that reactor to uh, to push forward with the next generation of power not that we're really light on power at the moment things seem to be doing all right and this quest is complete fantastic uh, but next time we can come back and we can start work as well on the netherite quest line here we can unlock glowstone netherite uh, soul sand and netherite we can get our next tier of support frame and we can of course begin working towards the hellish technium ingot which is the second to last or maybe third to last it's kind of second to last because there's hellish technium and then voided technium which is kind of the last one, but then there is also Final Technium, but Final Technium isn't really something we're going to automate. Final Technium is kind of like a last challenge. We do these um, Mod Mastery challenge quests here, and uh, once you complete all of these, as a reward, you get uh, 16 Final... Oh, no, maybe not, actually. Maybe you do have to craft the Final Technium. I think you do have to craft the Final Technium. I think you do it with these Mod Mastery books, but I don't think we're going to be automating these Mod Mastery books. I think we're going to do, like, one batch to get the Final Technium. But uh, anyway, those are problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Techopolis 2 there.